National Integration and Unity Luanda has lived up to his promise and is back to find out what national integration is all about. Dr. Emily is eager on seeing him back again. Always keeping his promise. You are a boy of integrity, Luanda. Trying. Besides, it's Saturday, meaning we have the whole day to ourselves. Good. I think for a change, we can go to the Kenyatta Sports Ground and chat. Of course, I can buy you an ice cream. Then what are you waiting for? Let's go and sit on the grass over there and talk. Oh, here is your ice cream. Thank you. Now I think I'm ready to listen. All right. Let me begin by explaining what national integration is. It is a way of bringing different people together to form one nation. And what do you mean by different people? We are different in terms of ethnic backgrounds, race, religion, and even social status. Therefore, the drive to bring all diverse people together is national integration. You see, at independence, there was need to bring together all the different groups of people for national development. Unlike in the colonial times, when Kenyans were sharply divided along tribe and color, this tribe against that tribe, British against Africans, and so on. So it was a push by the new government to unite people. Yep. It was very necessary for many good things to happen, such as promoting peace, rapid economic growth, as well as reducing conflicts between tribes. And encourage national unity, I guess. That is the point. National unity is the sense of belonging and togetherness as members of one nation. It is key to social, economic, and political developments of any nation. And to do this, it is important to identify pillars of national unity. By pillars, you mean factors. I think our national language, Kiswahili, unites us. Very smart boy. Kiswahili was made a national language of Kenya in 1975. It helps Kenyans of different tribes to communicate freely and exchange ideas easily. But remember, that both Kiswahili and English are the official languages of Kenya. I know that. No wonder our school has a rule that Kiswahili and English are spoken on specific days of the week. Rules are rules, young man. Just obey them as a good citizen. The education curriculum of Kenyan schools emphasizes importance of the sense of belonging to one nation. Students from different parts of the country mix freely in schools. Remember, in the colonial days, education was based on color. Europeans, Asians, and Africans attended separate schools. Today, there is at least one national school in each county. That makes sense a little. This means basic facilities should be provided fairly to everyone's satisfaction. Food is basic to me. <laughs> I know that, foodiest boy. But think outside the box a little. The government has a duty to ensure all citizens can access education, health care, safe water, and good roads. Of course, good roads will allow easy movement of the people to trade their items. Exactly, Luanda. Trade, intermarriage, Inter-school games and employment are social and cultural factors that work to enhance national unity. When you marry from outside your tribe, inter-ethnic bonds become stronger. Likewise, when you do business with people in Mandera, you become their friend. I once worked in Narok where I made so many Maasai friends. My dream is to live and work in the Lorette. Cool weather!
<laughs> Make it happen. It is your constitutional right. The constitution forms a major unifying factor for the people of Kenya. It is the supreme law of our land, protects the right and freedoms, and gives equal opportunities to all of us. So, who makes this constitution? Is it the president? <laughs> no. The parliament passes bills, which the president approves to become laws. The courts work to enforce these laws. In short, the three arms of government work hand in hand to ensure we are all served equally. So you see, we are united as a nation through them. One president, one nation. So you say. And the president presides over public holidays such as Madaraka Day, Jamhuri Day, and... Mashuja Day. I saw him on TV the other day inspecting a guard of honor in Nyayo Stadium. Very observant boy. Of course, on that day, we celebrate our heroes. In all these occasions, Kenyans of all walks of life come together to celebrate. Other national events that unite Kenyans are music and drama festivals for schools and colleges. And on these days, the national anthem is always sung to grace the event. That is common knowledge, Buana. There's a line in the national anthem that goes like, May we dwell in unity, peace and liberty. Hmm. That speaks volumes, you know. Our national anthem, the national flag, the coat of arms, and the public seal are all symbols of national unity. Coat of arm. It is a symbol of our existence as an independent state. There are also national philosophies that work to strengthen these symbols. National philosophies now? Don't look at me like that. Anyway, before I can help you with that, let's see what you have gotten out of our discussion. Oh. Okay. National integration is a way of bringing different people together to form one nation. That's right. It is important because it promotes peace and rapid economic growth in the country. Mm -hmm. National unity, on the other hand, is a state in which citizens of a country feel a sense of belonging. Nice. It is promoted by our constitution, education, fair resource distribution, intermarriages, national language, symbols, and national philosophies, which I know nothing about. <laughs> Good. Now, let's take a walk as I talk about national philosophies. <sighs> Thank you.